And we're live. Are we live? We are. Are you sure? I'm I mean, this sure. brings up Descartes. I think, therefore, true. I am. Here's a question. Why, why doesn't he say, I think, I think, therefore, I think I am, Hang I on, think. Let, oh, i got to think about that. i got to think about that. Here's a question for you. How can we be sure that our memories are in any way reliable? Because memories are a strange thing. In the same way that we can be sure that the world is real and not a hypnotic dream uh, but from the devil. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's no formal proof. Right. It's not logically inconsistent to say we're really a brain in a vat dreaming that we're in a world. Mm -hmm. But we all know by common sense that that's insane. Well, that's funny you say that because as soon as you say we all know, apparently we don't all know. Well, maybe we pretend not to All non-philosophers know it. Yes, there you go. You need a PhD. Yes. Yeah. The, the, these are really interesting questions, I think, because I, I think sometimes Christians are afraid they don't have the level of certitude they think they ought to have about the existence of God, and they were, therefore they feel bad about that. But they if, haven't read Aquinas then. Well, real quick, if you read Hume or Kant or others, you start to realize or you might start to doubt yourself, right? You find out that there are very many extremely intelligent people, much smarter than you, yeah. uh, who lack common sense. So uh, Thomas Reed, who was a contemporary of Hume, tried to uh, accept Hume's empiricistic premises without his radical skeptical conclusions. And the only way he could do it was by giving common sense a kind of authority over reason rather than vice versa. Okay. But why, why think common sense as anything worth understanding? Because there's no alternative, from. because that's where we all start. That's the foundation our feet are on, no matter where we run or fly to. But we learn things as we grow, and some things that we learn are counterintuitive oh, yeah. or yeah. contradict those things we once believed, so true. why can't that be true the whole way down? Maybe common sense is just for those ignorant peasants, but the more we learn, we might come to understand that the world is a much more... Well, I our place that maybe the external world doesn't, I maybe you don't a, exist. I think there's a paradox here. This, this doesn't really answer your question, but uh, ignorant peasants are really more reliable than super intelligent philosophers. Reliable how, though? They speak the truth. They know the truth. They live the truth. Uh, they're not riddled with doubt. They don't take very seriously the brain of the bat hypothesis. Mm. But I, I'm I'm playing devil's advocate here, of course. Of course. But I mean, maybe uh, when you, but that kind of begs the question, though, doesn't it? You say they live by the truth, they know the truth, but, yeah. but maybe they don't. Maybe what well, they think is the truth is just their ignorance. On the one hand, Descartes is extremely commonsensical in starting with "I think, therefore I am." Uh, that's that's psychologically indubitable. On the other hand, uh, he's trying to do what cannot be done, namely justify reason. The justification by reason. By reason, excuse me, the justification of reason by reason obviously commits the fallacy of begging the question. Mm. You're using the very instrument that you're trying to uh, mm -hmm. explore and, and, and validate. What instrument do you use to validate it? Mm -hmm. think, think of all the thoughts you've ever had as a thousand people. Okay. And, and Descartes wants to put them all on trial. Right. And justify reason itself. All right. Who's going to be the judge there? Is it somebody who's not an act of reason? Something subhuman, like animal instinct? Or is it going to be something superior to reason, like mystical experience or divine revelation? He doesn't want that. So it has to be an act of reason. So one of those prisoners has to jump out of the, the dock and assume the judge's robe and declare himself and all the other 999 prisoners uh, not guilty. That's not fair. And there's no alternative to that. Hmm. I've come to admire William James much more than, than before. Uh, pragmatism is not an ethics. It's not even a philosophy. It's a method. Uh, you, you learn by doing something first, and then you think about it. And what we do is to think. And thus we begin with trust in our thought. Our thought must, must be about something. It can't be about nothing. It might be false. But to say that all thoughts are false is self-contradictory because then it says that that thought, that all thoughts are false, uh, can't be false. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of uh, health, you know. I know what it feels like to be healthy and mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to be sick. 
And therefore, if I'm eating food that people say is either healthy or bad for you, I can tell based on how my body reacts to that thing. Right. Likewise, when I have in the past tried to convince myself that things like fornication, lying, stealing from my parents was justifiable, I felt sick in a way. When I started to listen to the church, even if I wasn't 100% convinced why she taught the things that she did, I found myself more free, more healthy spiritually. That's true but tricky because there are deceptive feelings and the line between feelings that are reliable and feelings that are deceptive is not a bright, hard, clear line. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the false assumption in the argument we're having is that you need certainty. Maybe you don't. Yeah, yeah and that kind of gets us back to where we began. And that's why I was saying I think people feel guilty for not having whatever it means to say 100% epistemic certainty. But we don't have that about most things, or maybe that's the wrong way of even phrasing it. I think you exist. I know you exist, but I have no access to your inner life, and there's no way I could have access to it. You we might know, be a sophisticated we know, cyborg. We know very many things without being able to prove them. Yeah. And, and another example would be if you said to me, is your wife a Russian spy? I would say, don't be silly. And you would say, well, I mean, she might be, and if she was a very good one, it would make sense that you wouldn't suspect her. And I would say, that's silly. And if we kept talking for a while, you might wear me down such that I would say, well, okay, maybe it's possible, I suppose. But I got no good reason to think that. Mm. And if I was to suspect her of that, that would actually ruin my relationship with her. Mm -hmm. Likewise, if you were to ask me about God's existence, my relationship with Christ, you might get me down to the point where I say, well, perhaps it all is a bloody illusion. Maybe I am just terrified of death and I'm looking for something to make me feel better. But I don't actually have any good reasons to think God doesn't exist. I mm -hmm. know people have proposed them, mm -hmm. and sometimes I feel the weight of them emotionally, but I don't feel myself convinced by them. So I'm going to go on believing what seems obvious to me, even if I don't know how to answer you. On a strictly rational level, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, the fact that there are literally dozens of arguments for the existence of God, yeah. I think they're variously persuasive. Some of them are very good, some of them are not. And only one really good argument against the existence of God, that's the problem of evil. Mm -hmm. Well, that's 25 to 1. Converging clues are sort of like a, uh, a nautical rope. Uh, woven of many little strands, but then when you put 25 of them together, you get not just 25 threads, but a, a rope that can pull a boat. Yeah, it is interesting. You know, in Aquinas's De Malo, he'll come up with as many as something, I think if memory serves, 24 objections to the points he wants to make. And you, you've pointed this out that in the Summa, he comes up with two objections for yeah. God's existence, and one of them isn't even an argument against God. That's right. That's right. In fact, explain you, why. Yeah. Well, the second one is the argument from science. Uh, science can explain things satisfactorily without God. Uh, nature is the cause of everything natural, uh, and uh, the human will is the cause of everything artificial or voluntary, uh, and um, that suffices. So why add a third mm -hmm. hypothesis? And the answer is simply because you're asking a different question. Where did that all come from? account for nature itself, account for the, the human will itself. So if you're not asking an ultimate question, you don't need an ultimate answer and you don't need God. Am I also right in thinking, though, if you say, well, there is no need for the God hypothesis because all can be explained naturally. Well, even if all can be explained naturally, it wouldn't follow that God it doesn't exist. follow that yeah. God doesn't exist. No, many things don't, don't are not needed. Oysters, for instance. God could have <laughs> created a world without oysters. It's probably a Real good reason oysters exist that we don't know about, maybe. I think in Louisiana Thursday. they know the reason. <laughs> no, their yeah. fried oysters are the best in the world. But uh, let's let's think more about your yeah. imagined scenario. Suppose suppose a policeman came into the studio and said, um, Dr. Kraft, um, I said, yes, that's me. He said, uh, please come home back to uh, Boston because um, your wife is in jail. I said, in jail? Why? Well, um, the, um, the lady next door... Uh, was found with her head decapitated. And your wife's fingerprints were found on the axe. So we think that uh, uh, she, she must be guilty. Uh, and furthermore, we have an eyewitness who swears that he saw her do it. I would laugh at him. I, I would say, impossible. I know what you don't know. I know who she is. 
I mean, she's capable of many things, as we all are, but not that. Maybe killing me, but not the next one. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, actually, when we got married, our uh, our favorite movie was uh, Divorce Italian Style, which was okay. a, uh, a comedy in the 60s where, uh, uh, since there was no divorce allowed in Italy at the time, for any reason, mm. the only way you could get a divorce was by murdering mm. your spouse. So this guy hires a, a mafia hitman to murder his spouse, and he succeeds in murdering many women, but none of them is his spouse. She's the one that survives. Okay. We thought it was funny, uh, not just because of that, but because we thought that murder is much more reasonable than divorce. Mm-hmm. So as long as we don't have weapons of mass destruction in our house, we're safe. Uh-huh. And it worked. Well, that's good. Well, what I would say to the, yes. to the cop, it would, would you laugh at him? Yeah. And he would say, why do you laugh? We have evidence. I said, no, you don't. You have apparent evidence. Mm. I have knowledge that you don't have. And that's the kind of knowledge which can't be quantified and can't be quite put into a syllogism, but it's genuine knowledge. I know that I'm talking to a human being now and not a robot. Isn't it possible that they could make a robot that, that deceives us into believing that it's a human being? They're yes. pretty close to doing that now. Yeah. Yes, it's possible. How then do I know that I'm talking to you, that there's another mind there, that you're not just artificial intelligence? I don't know how I know it. Yeah. I don't know. How do I know that my wife is incapable of it being an axe murderer? I don't know, but I know it. Mm. Knowing about knowing is the, uh, the bugbear of, of early modern philosophers. How, how, can you, how can you be certain? Mm. How, how can you trust reason itself? That's an unanswerable question. Mm-hmm. We don't have to answer that question. So with Descartes, for those at home who aren't familiar, right? So Descartes is aware that his senses have deceived him in the past. He's aware that he's believed things that he now knows to be false. He wants to be much more modest in what he knows and so decides to doubt everything he can doubt. And so he tries to kind of build the tower up again. Uh, I, I'll let you speak to that in a second. But I, I thought to myself, um, you know, well, why, why, why not begin with universal doubt? And I don't know of an answer ex- except if I try to apply that in a relationship context. You know, like if, I, if a young Thursday out there meets a woman and they go on a date and he decides, I've been fooled in the past and it hurt, therefore... I'm not going to accept anything about this person unless I know it's true. Uh, well, he would ruin the relationship yes. with her. Yes. And I think likewise, to begin with universal doubt about the things that you encounter in reality, yes. you, you kind of you ruin life yes. or you yes. ruin your, in, your interaction with reality. What do you think? I totally agree with that. I don't think Descartes would because he wants the kind of certainty that he can get only by, by the cogito ergo sum. He can't, he can't say, uh, I just petted this horse this morning and I know that that is a live horse. Uh, well, the story about Descartes riding his horse back to, uh, to Paris uh, and the horse goes blind. Oh, and uh, I'm unaware Descartes of this. gets off. It, it's a joke. It's oh, real. okay. <laughs> uh, he gets off the horse uh, and the horse doesn't know where to go. So he has to lead the horse and mm-hmm. he comes home. Uh, and his friend said, uh, Descartes, you're the world's greatest philosopher. I see that you're looking at the fallacy. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's the fallacy? The fallacy of putting Descartes before the horse. Very good. <laughs> and that's not just a joke. That's, uh, that's a philosophical analogy. Uh, right. Self-knowledge can't come before knowledge of a horse or the world or, or, or whatever. Uh, Aquinas says the first thing we know is that something is. Something's yeah. out there. Woody Allen, in one of his books, who's, he's, he's something of a philosopher, you know, says that uh, New Yorkers can't follow Descartes because Descartes starts by doubting whether anything exists. Every New Yorker, uh, this was back in the 50s, is awakened every morning at about 7 o'clock by the garbage trucks. Now, if, <laughs> if that isn't real, why does it wake me up? Yeah, that's good. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like and subscribe.